Just a heads up before we get into this video, I will not be responding to comments this time around. People have been intentionally spoiling Starfield in the comments section of videos. I don't want to be a part of it. And if you venture into the comments, you do so at your own risk. Do be aware. So with that out of the way, thank you all for being here. Thank you all for supporting the channel and I hope you enjoy. Gamescom is presently underway and it has been massively exciting already from opening night live, titles like Nightingale continue to impress me, Crimson Desert, which I was convinced was an MMO, is actually a single player title which now completely caught me off guard and my excitement for that game is through the roof. Probably a highlight for the show, of course many other surprises, but Bethesda in particular has had a massive presence with Starfield naturally upcoming. How is it going everybody? My name is DeMarco and a lot has been coming from Starfield and Bethesda out of Gamescom. Not only are there some really incredible booths, Temper Pedic apparently made an entire Starfield gaming station with an ultra wide monitor. There's really cool displays that feature the Constellation Edition, the Steelbook case and all sorts of cool stuff in there. But also Gamescom itself opened with a performance from Enon Zer Live, and there was a brand new live action trailer of the game that was shown off and I have to say credit to Bethesda's team that worked on this as far as live action trailers go I think this was one of my all-time favorites. Genuinely speaking, it was very well done. The entire trailer embodies the spirit of Starfield. There's emotion, you could see the passion, it's well done. And there were some secrets that you could look at, nothing major, but little tidbits such as these mysterious symbols that are carved into the surface of the planets that you can see. Directly tied to the artifact, we immediately see the protagonist go down to the planet. There's some gravitational anomaly that's taking place with the sand and then immediately after cuts away to them approaching the artifact. Some very clever folks have identified that this is actually incredibly similar to the Eye of the Sahara, a real world location visible from space that is where the lost city of Atlantis would most likely be or was. So chew on that little bit of speculation as we wait for the launch to get closer. But it does make me wonder why this is as massive and as visible as it is. Do the people who made this want it to be found or is it possibly done for some type of worship? We know that some of the religions in Starfield, for example, the Sanctum Universum believe that there is a god that's out there amongst the stars waiting to be found. Perhaps this civilization believed the same thing. It just leads me further to believe that 100% the main story of Starfield is about us discovering intelligent life elsewhere in the universe and the consequences of that good or bad. It's an exciting mystery to uncover. We also do get another look at New Atlantis, this time seemingly from the opposite side of what we saw in the direct. It might not seem like much to some, but to me it really highlights just how massive New Atlantis is as a city, especially compared to previous cities, the likes of Skyrim where even the capital of Skyrim Solitude was more like just a walled village. Brian McCaffrey got early access to play the game months ago at this point, and he described New Atlantis as the Imperial City from Oblivion. There's a transit system to get around. It's absolutely massive. I think fans are gonna be very pleasantly surprised when they finally get to experience it for themselves. Really don't believe we know what we're in for, at least most of us. A lot of folks were also able to get an exclusive early preview of Starfield showcasing the opening moments of the game. I'm not gonna go into detail about what was shown off there because I want to stay as far away from spoilers as possible. However, what I will say is that all of the impressions are coming out of it 100% positive. GameSpot did a really good write-up of this article. I'm not going to go too deep into it because I want to stay as spoiler-free as possible for everybody who wants to go into this fresh-minded. However, there was a user over on Reddit by the name of Majestic Koala fantastic name by the way, that did a very good job of summarizing the thoughts in the most non-spoilery way possible. Here is what they had to say, quote, Honestly, it's incredibly impressive and shows a marked improvement on the excellent 60-minute demo which blew our minds apart back in the summer. Facial animations look sharper and more defined, the environments look more vibrant, and combat looks really damn capable. 
A little detail I really appreciated in this opening beyond that, however, was just how responsive Starfield seems to your presence. There's a moment where the character nabs a sandwich from an NPC and they audibly complain about it. It's small, but it speaks to the sort of immersive world building that Bethesda has always been so fantastic at. And we know for a fact this is a perfect example of what Todd Howard has said in the past. He's directly commented on the reactivity of the world to you, the player. It started off on a smaller scale with the guards just responding to the factions that you aligned with or some of the actions that you've taken throughout the game. And to make the worlds more responsive in that way, but on a much grander scale, this is a good indication of exactly how that's being done. And these small but noticeable ways. They continue on by saying, I also love that you have to manually put on your space helmet before stepping out in the airlock. And the first look at the planet's surface is stunning, a distraction that's difficult to ignore. Curious as to whether or not you're going to have to manually do that every single time, or if it's just for the opening sequence of the game for that dramatic effect. That's obviously one of the two step out moments that Todd Howard mentioned were in Starfield. Sort of feel bad in a way that the folks watching this got it spoiled, but hey, I guess it's better for the rest of us here at home in a way. And lastly, they did mention while the scale and scope, depth, and detail is impressive, it's the combat that really caught my attention on this new look at the game. Enemies are fast and reactive, working cleverly within the environment as ships fly overhead. A lot of this, I have a feeling, is due to the additional time that Bethesda was given to work on Starfield. And I'm curious about the type of game that we would have gotten if it were released in 2022, I really don't feel like it would be up to the scale or even up to the level of praise that it's receiving if it had been. And so thank you for the delay, genuinely, whoever made that decision. One of the most exciting aspects for me is exactly how far some of this is pushed. The enemy reactivity in particular during combat and utilizing the environment, I love that aspect. That is how you add in good difficulty to the game without making it just so they'll deal more damage to you Meanwhile, they become bullet sponges. But how far does the world reactivity get pushed in accordance with the enemy AI as well? If you killed three out of four Crimson Fleet pirates that you're in combat with, does the fourth surrender? Do they try to flee? Do they do anything different besides just charge head on? Will different NPCs react differently based on a personality type that can get randomly placed into every enemy that you encounter? Some might be more prone to run away, some might be more prone to charge into battle, that sort of thing. How far does it go? And if not in this game, is it possible that they can build upon what they're doing here? For the Elder Scrolls 6. I don't want to go any further into the specifics that the article mentions here. I want everybody to go into this game as fresh as possible, but the wait absolutely be, will be worth it. I can promise you that. And in addition, there's also a new interview from Pete Hines where he just explains the size of Starfield. Take a listen for yourself. For something like this, for as special as it is, for as long as I've been here and to see what these different launches are, you can tell when something special is happening and I think Starfield is that. And it really required us to push ourselves in terms of how do you get the rest of the world to wrap its head around a game of this size and scope. I mean, it is literally it feels when you're playing it almost like there are a bunch of different games mm. inside of one game. We've been seeing Bethesda games get bigger and bigger. The settlement system, for starters, really changed, I think, the way that Bethesda approaches games. And that in and of itself is an entire experience that players get incredibly involved in. Now you add in the space mechanics and all the things you can do with the ship customization, exploring outer space, landing on random planets, the return of the outpost system, but changed from what we've seen before and updated and improved. And it really is a lot of different experiences on top of the long-standing experience of a Bethesda game where you can really be whoever you want to be and do whatever you want to do, whether it was Skyrim or Oblivion, any of those titles. Like I was just talking to a couple of folks from our Benelux office who were like, you know, they've both played, you know, about the same amount of time, like, you know, 40 hours or 60 hours, but their experiences were like, we didn't do any of the same things at all, like not even close. I really love that Pete Hines just sort of shrugs off the fact, yeah, they've been playing, I don't know, 40 or 60 hours as though it wasn't a lot of time, and yet still 
completely different experiences beyond developers, it really harkens back to that design philosophy for Bethesda games where once you get out of the tutorial area, that opening moment, you're really free to do whatever you want and Starfield with its scale and size embodies that bigger than ever. And the folks that are playing it, like one of the few things they will tell us is, yeah, you weren't kidding how big, like I can't <laughs> believe how big it is. Like, yeah, it's content and explore it like no matter how you want to play there is so much for you to do in this game so we all know that starfield it's a big game but truly how massive does feel like something we need to experience individually to get a grasp it's been said in the past it's been brought up during interviews it's really just coming to the realization now for someone like myself and i don't think even then myself and many others will truly understand until we play the game. But as excitement continues to ramp up, as we get closer to launch, as people are already playing the game who are early access codes for Starfield, it really does feel as though Starfield, based on comments we've heard in the past from Pete Hines and the like, it will absolutely be one of the biggest, most special games of this generation and it's all coming full circle as we get closer to launch but anyway that's what i have right now coming out of gamescom i fully suspect that more will appear i don't think that's the ace up their sleeve at least before the launch xbox and bethesda probably have one more surprise for us all but thank you all so much for watching be wary of the comment section below for spoilers people are doing it just because they're trolling so do be aware of that and as always i hope to see you all next time so long everybody